it's Reverend Helen again, but this time I'm not in my kitchen. I've actually made it to the church and I want to show you around because normally you would come down here and look around for yourselves. You would walk up the path. I don't know whether you can show the path. You would walk up the path and come in through the door and meet me here. And I'm really sad that that can't happen. But the great thing is that the church has been locked, but now it's open. So let's go and have a look at what's on the door. Someone's had some chalk. Let's have a look. Molly's come with me, and on the door, you can see three letters. C or K, M or M, and B or B. And that is for some Latin words, which mean what is written above here on the lintel. May Christ bless this house. Because a church is like a house, it's where we come together to worship and many people refer to a church as a house of prayer so come on in and have a look it's different though from if you've been before a bit like school looks different because of the virus we've had to do things differently so let's go in and we'll see if we can take molly in and let her off the lead come on molly so just like at school we have to sanitize our hands before we come in there we are. I bet you've been doing this a lot. Like that. Lots of times in between like that. Okay. And then we can go in through the second door. And just behind the door is the font. So those of you who've been before or who have been baptised or had brothers or sisters baptised, the font is where the baptism takes place. So we come this way and see if Molly would like to wander around. There you go, Molly. Maybe close the door so that she doesn't come out. That's it. So if we come to this part of the church and look down towards the altar, you can see the altar and the stained glass window. A stained glass window is a coloured window and it's telling the story of Jesus' life. You see Jesus on the left-hand side with Mary and Joseph and the donkey. In the middle, Jesus on the cross. And on the right-hand side, Jesus ascending. But there's a particular window that we're going to look at now, which shows how we're connected, school and church, because we share the same name. So this is St. Peter and St. Paul's Church and you're at St Peter and St Paul's school. So let's go and have a look at the stained glass window that tells that story. But first, I need to call Molly. Molly! Molly, come! Molly! Molly! She's not coming. Might have to go and get her. Here she comes. Come on, Molly, when you come. Molly has to come to church. There we are. Right. So, at the moment, the church is slightly different and there's a roped off area, but I'm going to go in there to show you this window. So, here we are at a window with two people in it. It's got two sides to it and on this side we've got St Peter and it tells us that it's St Peter at the bottom in this writing here, St Peter is short for St Peter. There's a picture of St Peter, we don't know what St Peter looked like, we have no photographs, we have no idea, but somebody has created a window with an idea of what St Peter might have looked like and then next to St Peter we've got St Paul. And they are there because they are the saints that this church is named after. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about those two saints because they're also the people that the school is named after. Because the school and the church are joined together, sharing a name and sharing lots of other things. So each church that you go to is named after somebody. And this is St Peter and St Paul. And we're going to start with St Peter. 
So Peter started his life as a fisherman. He was one of Jesus' disciples who would fish in the Sea of Galilee and who joined Jesus when Jesus started to teach and to travel. So St. Peter gave up fishing and went with Jesus for three years as Jesus travelled around teaching people. And there are lots of things I could tell you about St. Peter, but the most important thing right now is that Jesus in the end said to Peter, you are my rock. You are the rock upon which I will found my church. So I've got a rock here, if you can see it, and it's to remind us that a rock is a really strong, firm foundation. And St. Peter is the rock upon which, which Jesus said he was going to build his church. So St. Peter knew Jesus. He was a friend of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. And he was the beginnings of churches. That's why he's got a key. Because he began on earth ended in heaven, he holds the keys to heaven, but was the beginning of the church on earth. Next to him we've got St Peter. St Peter, very, very different. St Peter wasn't a fisherman at all. St Peter, St Paul, we've got St Paul. St Paul wasn't a fisherman at all. St Paul was actually a Roman soldier, a very high up, important Roman soldier, who went around killing Christians being really bullying and killing Christians. But, so he never met Jesus, but he did have a moment in his life when suddenly Jesus came to him, he had a massive experience, he fell off his horse, he was blind for three days, and at the end of all that time, he changed from being a bully and a killer and a soldier to being somebody who wanted to follow Jesus' story of loving people. And St Paul built upon what St Peter had started. St Paul travelled away from where St Peter and all the disciples had lived with Jesus to lots of different places and started new churches in lots of different places. And when he couldn't be in touch with everybody, he wrote letters. So he would write letters to the people he'd visited and say, this is how you should behave, how are you getting on, how's your new church, how's your new community. He wrote lots and lots and lots of letters. And those letters are in our Bibles. They're at the back of the Bible, in the New Testament bit of the Bible, the letters that St Paul wrote to the new Christians in the new churches that he was founding. And that's why you can see in his right hand, you can see a feather because he would have written with a quill pen and a book. And in this hand, you can see the sword from his previous life when he had been a Roman soldier. And a sword is an odd thing for somebody who follows Jesus to have. But sometimes we talk about the sword of truth or the sword of peace, which is used not to kill or to damage, but is a symbol of saying, we are going to fight with our hearts and our minds for a better world. And that's what St Paul ended up doing. So he changed in his life. St Peter changed in his life. St Paul changed in his life because of the way in which they experienced Jesus. So when we talk about Jesus being the light of the world and how that will affect our lives, we can look back at St Peter and St Paul and remember that even people in these stained glass windows who seem so far away from us and so important were changed by knowing Jesus in their lives. So I'm going to end by going through to the altar and giving you a blessing at the end of this little collective worship. So I hope I can get through underneath this rope. Stand here. and give you a blessing in the name of St Peter and St Paul from St Peter and St Paul's Church. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.
maybe 